everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing another picture window card I did in my last video, and this is using the same stamp set, but for a girl. So I sent this to my niece when I sent my nephew his birthday card. So this little girl dinosaur card is for my niece, and so I'm going to show you how I made that. So I'm starting with the Rarsome, or Rarsome uh, stamp set and dies from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to use the really rainbow scalloped paper that's new for the summer season. And then this is the center picture window card creating set. And then I have an extra add-on die on the left there for some extra embellishments. I've stamped out the dinosaurs already using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I have this card stock from Michaels. The pink comes, the light pink comes from the Roses collection. And then I have some loose leaf open card stock as well that I'm going to use with this card. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with that Roses card stock first. And so that's going to create the background like you see here on that card. So I'm going to pull out the base dies and this makes the framework of the card. And I love these dies because it cuts it out in the correct size. I don't have to do any measuring to get that card um, exactly right. And it's just super handy for getting started really quickly with this project. So now I'm going to trim down the paper so that it can fit in my Sizzix Big Kick machine. And this is about the width I need. Um, if I had been thinking, I should have cut it the other way, but I just ended up cutting it this way. I wasn't thinking, so I just went ahead with it. So I'm using some post-it tape to hold that down in place. And I don't have to worry about any way that the uh, dies are laying down on the paper. It's just um, a solid color. But if you were using a pattern, you'd want to be mindful of the way you're positioning the dies. Now this little piece here is going to cut that picture window out of the, the main center piece. And that's going to create the opening for the card so that I can put all of the activity and images inside that area. Now here I am using patterned paper so I really want to make sure that those scallops line up pretty similar between those two templates. This is part of the add-on kit so this is going to create uh, side panels and a front panel using the decorative paper that I'm using and it's going to fit to the exact frame size of the base of the card. I also have these pieces here that are cut out. They look like little hillsides. That's part of the main set. And that's going to create background elements that I can attach my critters to. So these pieces are part of the add-on set of the picture window. And so I have some little branches and some tree tops that I'm going to cut out in this purple and the pink as well. And so this will be a nice complement to the frame. And it won't be a main element, but it'll just add a little bit more depth and decoration to the card. So here's kind of what they're going to look like when they're put together. I just need to glue these guys, uh, the stems, onto the treetops. So to do this, just because it's such a small area, I'm just going to use uh, my spare piece from the picture window to put some white glue onto, some craft glue. And so I find that craft glue is the best for those tricky areas that are super small, that's hard to get tape into. Um, and I just use the end of my X-Acto knife just to pick up a little dab. I don't want to put too much on, especially with the white craft glue. Um, and I believe it's made by Elmer's. Uh, yes, Elmer's Craft Bond glue seems to work really good with paper. And so I find that just a small thin layer will hold it really well. So again, just using my knife to put it into position and then just tacking it together. And it dries super quick as long as you don't put too much on. I did have a little bit squirt out the edge of one of my branches, so I was able to take the end of my X-Acto knife and just pick that uh, bead of glue up from along that edge super easy as well. So if I sound a little funny, I have to excuse myself. I hope I don't sound too bad, but I'm recovering from a summer cold and I wanted to have this video out um, last week and I've been just waiting for my voice to get better and this is the first day in a week that I've actually not sounded like a mouse or just lost my voice completely when talking so or not been coughing like crazy so hopefully I sound okay for this uh, voiceover. So now I'm going to take um, these uh, ocean waves and so I want to cut out half of my panel or these are wavy borders, sorry, not ocean waves. These are wavy borders. So I'm going to line up my panels so that it cuts at the same height on all three panels. And this um, die is wide enough to just fit the width of those entire three panels, which is perfect. So I'm gonna line those up with some post-it tape as well. And I'm gonna run them all through my big kick in one shot. So I have them all tacked down and I'm just gonna throw them in like this and and then my lines will be even and straight on my panels. So here's what they look like cut out. 
and I'm just going to see how they fit. Yes, this, this is how they're going to look on the card. And I have space at the bottom to stamp my sentiment where it's not busy with that patterned paper. And then on the inside, same idea. I can write a sentiment on that side panel. So now I'm ready to color my dinosaurs. I really want to pick colors that are more girly because this is a girl card. And I want to pick colors that match the theme. So I'm really going for very girly pinks and purples. Um, just something very simple and not really dinosaur-esque, I guess, um, but something that will still uh, be coordinating with the card overall. So I'm going to list all of the colors that I use in my description below, and I have links to those Copic colors as well. I try to break them out by object or critter when I can. Um, sometimes it gets tricky to remember, but I, um, I have them all listed below. So if you're curious about any of the colors or you see a Copic color that you kind of like and you're wondering about, you can see those links in the description below for those. So my little volcano is going to be blue, which I thought was really fun. It almost reminds me of like an ice mountain or something as well, which you could do that with. And then the lava doing the pink as well and just the accents. Now I've left all the coloring inside this video so that you can see the process and the buildup of those colors. And then if you want to slow it down in YouTube, there is a setting in the view player. Um, you, you can change the playback speed. So if you want to slow this down and just have a look at the blending in a slower, more real time look, then you can do that for sure. And so this will give you a look at all of the process for that. Now I am pulling in a few other colors. As you see, I do have some blues complementing. I've pulled in some greens as well, just something that's very close to that main color palette, but that could be used as a little bit of a spot color or more of an interest color. So it's not just so flat with just pinks and purples. So now I'm cutting out all my little critters and I have them popped out through my die cutting machine. So now I'm gonna start arranging the build of the card. The nice thing about this card set is when you punch out the card pieces, they come with embossed lines for folding. So you don't have to guess where to make those folds. They're already pre-indented when you run them through your die cutting machine. And so I know where to fold them to put the tabs down to attach them. And so for those tabs, I'm gonna put two-way tape on all of them. And then I'm gonna put my window together first. So I know that that's gotta line up with the outside edge of the card. So I have that matching now, and I'm just gonna glue it on the right side until I get everything assembled in the center picture part. And then when everything's where I want it, then I will pull all the tape off the left side of all the tabs that are on the left and put the card together. So these are the background elements, those hills that I mentioned earlier, and these just sit on the background of the picture window and they allow you to attach elements to them. So you can put different levels of critters. They don't all have to be on the same plane or the same baseline. And you can move them around to the height that you need as well. Now for the tabs, these, the tabs on these ones are a little bit smaller. So I usually cut my two-way tape in half um, and it fits nicely on that width there. I always like to look from the top down to make sure I'm getting a nice 90 degree angle on each side of the folded edges. And I find that if it makes a nice 90 degree angle when they're put together, uh, then it will fit nice when the card's built overall. So here I'm just finding placement for those hills. And so again, I'm just gluing or attaching down the right side and then checking the placement to make sure the 90 degree angles are gonna work for where I put it on the card. And then at the end, I'll put the other side on and I'll show you how to do that where it's really easy and they all match up symmetrically, which is very important with this card. So the hillsides themselves, though, are kind of a guessing game. Um, you can put them anywhere vertically that you want, but to position them on the right side, I always find it helps to look from the top down and match those 90 degree angles. If it looks like it's creating a square with the back of the card, then chances are that's probably about the, the width that you want to put it out from the folded edge on the inside. So now I've got these cloud shapes as well, and these are extra, extra embellishments included in the card creating kit. And so I just pop them out of some white cardstock, and I'm just putting those back in the background. They create another layer in the visual plane just makes it a little bit interesting but they're not super bold or bright that they uh, create too much visual noise they're just kind of background layers but they add to the interest to the card overall 
So there's three little clouds, so I have a big one on the right and then the two smaller ones are accompanying on the left. So now I'm ready to put this together. I'm going to lay all of the pieces down, make sure the flaps are open like so and that they're not overlapping each other. And then just very carefully put the card together and once you press it down and attach that left side, everything matches and is symmetrical to where it is on the right for placement. So that part is super easy and I'm always feeling so good once I get to that part because I know that the hardest part of building this card is over and that's matching or putting those tabs in the correct spots on the right side. So now I'm going to look at my dinosaurs and kind of decide where I want them to fall in the background, uh, which ones I want to put on the background elements, which ones I want in the foreground and kind of the height I want to place them at. So this one, when you do get to this process, I find it's a little bit tedious, just uh, fumbly almost, because it is a smaller card overall. So you're working with a smaller space and you're working in a confined area. So trying to get those critters into that window in the correct positioning. It's a little bit fumbly, but um, it's still fun to make. So it's not the worst thing, but it is a little bit tricky to get them, um, to get them in place. So now I'm putting some glue on my trees. I just want to add them as some background decoration as well. And so I'm just going to use them um, onto those hillsides that are in the background to help hold those elements. So I'm going to do one on each side, one on the left side and one on the right side. So no matter which way you're looking at the card, you're still going to see one of those trees. So here's a quick peek at how it's going. It's coming along pretty good so far. So now I'm going to build the panels next. And so these are just going to be kind of the sky elements of those side panels. And again, the panels are part of the add-on set. So this is a coordinating set with the base card kit that you have to buy separately. But I like these because they do have stitched edges. So they just add a bit more decoration and a bit more visual layers to your card. And I do like the idea that you can create side panels. You could create a full side panel and write your sentiment on it before you attach it as well, which I would actually recommend you do. It's hard to write on the card once the folded card is created because when you open it, it's like a pop-up card. It doesn't lay flat. So if you're right-handed like I am, it's really tricky to write on the left side panel. So it would be an idea to uh, write your sentiment on a separate element and then attach it on that panel later. So now I'm going to assemble the front side of the card. I have my volcano ready for the front because I want to use the sentiment I lava you and that just matches really well with that volcano. So I'm going to put some accents uh, with the little splashes from the volcano. I'm going to use this color here from the Lawn Fawn Market Collection. And so just another kind of red tone to match the pinks overall. I'm just going to put this little embellishment splashing out of the volcano. Now because my card is a pop-up card and it's kind of built already, it's popping up and it's hard for me to stamp it. So I'm just going to tack it down with some post-it tape to keep it flat on my table so that I can get this stamped in position. So now I'm ready to put my sentiment on and again just using the I Lava You because it matches the volcano. Super simple. Um, I had a little bit not stamp really correctly, um, so I came in with a micron pen and just touched up where the ink was missed. And then I'm just going to stamp the little exclamation point at the end as well. And then with the post-it tape, I can easily remove that. It won't rip the paper, low adhesion, and so it doesn't make a mess. So now I'm using my tape roller and I'm going to put on my last little dinosaur as a final embellishment. Super cute. I like how tiny he is. He fits in the corner perfectly. So now I'm going to put some more trees in. I just feel like it was a little bare. So I'm coming back in to add a few more trees into the foreground to create some more interest to the overall frame. And instead of having a perfect circle, it's going to have a disrupted circle with those trees overlapping outside of the frame. So it just creates a little more interest visually. And it just decorates it a bit more, makes it a bit more fun. So I'm making sure that I keep the trees flush to the bottom of the card so it looks like they're coming out from the main frame and not just floating in space. And again, for these ones, I am attaching them with the white glue. So just letting them dry for a few minutes, it doesn't take very long at all, especially if you don't put too much on. 
Um, and here the glue did bead up over the edge, so I just wiped it clean with the edge of my X-Acto knife. And then just giving a final press, and this is looking really good. So the card has turned out really good. I'm really happy with how it looks, and I have space to write my sentiment on both sides with the bottom parts of those panels removed. And I think my niece will really like this. I think it's really cute. And I'm excited to give this to her so that um, they each get a card at the same time. Even though it's only my nephew's birthday, but they both get something to share. I hope you guys enjoyed the look at this building of this weird picture window card. I just love this uh, card set so much. And I'm sure there'll be more cards to come. Thank you so much for watching.